Today, we're going to be talking about the Roaring 2020s. Try saying that 20 times in a row. Roaring, roar, roaring, roaring, the Roaring 2020s. Roaring, the Roaring, roar, roaring, war, roaring. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Roaring 2020s. I think I said it right. <laughs> now, for some of you guys out there that have been watching me for a long time, I've been talking about this for a long time. I've been saying that uh, at some point we were going to be hitting the Roaring 2020s, uh, just like we had the Roaring 20s back in 1920 going forward. From, the 19, from 1920 to 1929 was considered uh, the Roaring 20s, which ended with the great with the great depression okay at the end of uh, the decade and uh, to me that's where I feel like we're going I feel like we haven't even started yet and that um, again just like um, things uh, materialize things just keep getting bigger and better no matter what the hell we're talking about even great depressions even um, the fall of fiat currency um, in this case you know the dollar and all the other fiat currencies out there and so on and so forth so uh, so that's what we're gonna be talking about today today um, I'm gonna be doing one of these episodes I haven't done in a long time as you guys know I used to do these on a regular basis I'm um, just stand here and talk to you guys as you guys already know from following my previous vlogs um, I was doing a lot of live streams those live streams got taken away from me you know YouTube you know put me on double secret triple probation so so now I'm back to uploading videos. I've been gone for a week because it was my birthday. I've been moving, yada, yada, yada. You guys don't care about that stuff. If you do, well, you know, we'll talk about it on the other channels because I have a podcast and I got two more other channels that I'm not going to bore you with all the details. That's not what you guys clicked on today's episode for. We're here to talk about the roaring 2020s because that's where we're heading. That's where we are. We just started. In fact, we're already down almost with the first year. In fact, you're watching this most likely in the first day of fall, the first fall season of 2020. Now, some could argue that the first fall season happened on March 13th or around March uh, of this year when, um, you know, when the, the Dow Jones, uh, the economy, the stock market all took a major dump. But as you guys already know, um, we're sitting here late September and guess what? We made a V-shaped recovery. <laughs> And uh, we're going to be talking about that, all that. We're going to be talking about how we got that V-shaped recovery, um, what's going on now, what happened back 100 years ago, how does all that correlate with what's happening now, where are we going with this, because we see all this civil unrest. You know, we're about to hit an election um, in a couple months, in a couple, I mean, literally weeks at this point, um, and so on and so forth. I mean, we have so much, so much, I, I had to write notes. All right, that's right. I got a lot to talk about. And this is probably going to be a very long episode. Uh, we're going to see how we film this, but I think I'm just going to do what I usually do, which is just go off the cuff and just start talking to you guys and letting you guys know what's on my mind, what I think about the situation, and uh, and then we just go from there. You know, we have the little question and answer session down below in the comment section. Um, as you guys know from my live streams you know the cool part about that was the fact that i got to interact with you live but hey this is the second closest thing and again i still do live streams so if you guys are interested in that and, and want to keep talking about what i'm going to be talking about today and then something please by all means you know check out all the links down below i'm going to give you guys more information at the end of the episode to, with all that so you guys can find me wherever the hell but again it all starts with joseadiaga.com just go there and everything is there all right podcast included all right so let's get into it all right let's literally get into it so um the last couple days i have been watching uh you know documentaries because that's what i do all right <laughs> i mean between football and you know all the stuff you know i'm a miami dolphins fan you know we're already owing to in fact, done just like that video file that I just finished recording right now because, again, for some odd reason, the video camera just stopped recording. All right, so this video is probably going to be filled with edits here and there because I got a lot to say and I'm just trying to be as concise as possible and make sure that you guys enjoy um, everything you're listening to um, because there's a lot to, you know, digest here. So let's just get into it, okay? I forgot what I was talking about, but let's just get into it, okay? Basically, all right, so... Um, 
All right, you know, we're in the middle of the roaring 2020s, all right? Um, we're, you know, we could say that we've been in this for a little while, but in my opinion, you know, again, not because of the date, you know what I mean, or anything like that, but I really do think that right now we're about to hit hyper overdrive. Okay, now, if you guys follow me, you guys are always telling, you guys always know that I'm telling you guys to start, you know, buy gold, buy silver, buy um, things like fine art, buy Bitcoin, buy property, you know, buy all of these things that are going to help you amass wealth, okay? It's not about money, literally, it's not about the money. Those pieces of paper, that fiat currency is worth absolutely nothing. Zilp, zilch, nada, all right? And the thing is that right now, you know, we, most people out there, you know, are still under the impression that those pieces of paper are worth something and they kind of are because we still use them on a regular basis on a day-to-day -day basis you know when we purchase anything i mean again dollar is king and dollar will remain king for the time being all right when i when i told you guys you know i mean the, you know when i'm always telling you guys to buy all these assets and to learn about money learn about wealth learn about the difference between you know currency and uh, and money and all of these things, um, it's for your own benefit, okay? Because at the end of the day, if you know what's going on and you know how to build wealth, you know how to, you know, maintain wealth, you know where that money isn't really, is really nothing and money is just a means of exchange in order to get really what you need, what you want in order to build wealth. In fact, as we're about to, you know, uh, embark on these new 2020s, um, you know, we are gonna be uh, with the opportunity a lot of people are going to have the opportunity to create generational wealth all right wealth for not just you but for your for generations to come in your family and that's assuming that you educate yourself properly okay which you're not going to learn any of this stuff in school and they're not going to teach you any of this stuff in college or university or anything like that you got to go out there and read books you got to go out there and you know look at youtube videos like this so you can get an idea as to what's going on and then start really researching and uh, putting all this stuff to, to work and all that stuff okay so the 2020s are not going to be exactly the same as the 1920s in fact i think that we are a little bit ahead of the game i think a lot of this stuff started uh uh, maybe five four years ago okay but we're not you know we're not really gonna get going until well now you know now is when things are really starting to get going and I think things are gonna be you know they're just gonna extend a little longer I think that you know we are used to seeing a lot of these uh, hyperinflation situations a lot of these empire destroying situations in a shorter context when we look at let's say Weimar Germany Venezuela Zimbabwe and we look at these hyperinflations a lot of us you know we look at it in the short term you know meaning like oh yeah look that only happened in a couple years but we also got to remember that you know their currency is pegged to the dollar all right but you know for us to see this on a world scale with the world reserve currency that's a completely different animal altogether now it's not to say that we haven't seen this already in the past but it's gonna be completely different and it's not gonna be quickly it's not this hyperinflation isn't gonna be reached as quickly as a lot of us think or a lot of us want in fact it's gonna take a while all right, one major indicator as to how long this is gonna take is uh, just look at what Trump or whoever's in power, I mean, honestly, it doesn't matter who's in power, but hey, Trump's the one who's in power now and probably gonna be in power for a while. But the point I'm making is that again, he's not the one who's in power, neither is the other guy, neither is anybody in that position, it's other individuals over him that are in power. Who are these individuals? I don't know, we can talk about that alone for hours but we're not talking about that we're talking about something else so the point i'm making is that you know for the time being it doesn't look like oh you know we're going anywhere uh, but up and what do i mean by that well you know trump has said that we are not really gonna um you know he, he trump keeps pushing for negative interest rates okay so let's just start there he keeps pushing for negative interest rates there's other countries around the world, in Europe mainly, um, that already have negative interest rates, okay? So until we get into negative interest rate territory, again, you know, that is when, okay, we're getting closer, closer to the end. Doesn't mean we're at the end yet. And that's the thing. So right now, even though a lot of people might be thinking that it's the end, we're getting close to the end, oh my God, the end, ah! No, no, because again, we're not even at negative interest rates yet, okay? The dollar is still king today the the fed the federal reserve has taken over the treasury and is printing into oblivion and literally literally buying the world 
buying everything, buying every asset, everything that is, isn't bolted down and everything that is bolted down, okay? Everything, breathing, living, whatever it is, okay? So the, the Federal Reserve is buying it all up because they want to be the lender and buyer of last resort. So that's the thing, you know what I mean? They want to be the end all, be all, all right? And they're, on, they're well on their way, but again, once eventually all that happens and the whole thing goes into hyperinflation and starts tumbling down, well, that's it. Now, let's get into what I've learned and watching a lot of these documentaries about the, the Roaring Twenties back in 100 years ago. Well, again, a lot of us already know that and the, what happened was that at the end of the decade in 1929, the stock market crashed. And But what caused it to crash? Well, very simply, they had a stock market that was unregulated unfettered, you know, not bothered by anyone. Um, the presidents that were in power did not bother or, or touch or even try to regulate the banked run uh, stock market. In fact, they just let it ride. And so all of a sudden they were introduced with brand new things like uh, trading on margin. What does that mean? Well, people could literally um, get like a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars was a lot of money back then, okay? But they could get like a thousand dollars and then trade it on leverage I'm sure a lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about because you're probably doing it right now. Anyways, um, and, and you know, literally trade on leverage. So for example, they wanted, you know, if they had $1,000 in the stock market, the reality is that they had $10,000 in the stock market. So even the guy that was just a driver for a horse and carriage, or a guy that was a shoe shine boy, or whatever, everybody had stock, everybody was in the market, everybody was involved, everybody was, okay? And that's what was going on, okay? So everybody was in to this easy money. And why was it easy money? Because, well, for years and years and years and years throughout the decade, well, the stock market never went down. It just kept going up and up and up and up. Because, you know, the United States back then, they started getting into allowing the people First of all, they wanted to continue rebuilding the economy. You know what I mean? They wanted to continue pumping the economy, making the best economy in the world. We had just come out of World War I. We had just come out of uh, the first pandemic, right? The Spanish flu. We went through all that. And uh, after we came out of all that, a good majority of the world was you know, basically just picking up the pieces, you know, whether it was, uh, you know, picking up the pieces from the war or picking up the pieces from the, the Spanish flu or both. They were all picking, a good majority of the world were picking up the pieces economically all over the place. But the United States was one of the only places that was kind of like untouched, unharmed on anything, and they were able to take full advantage of that. One of the things that they did was print into oblivion. The Fed was only created a few years prior, about a decade prior, give or take. Um, and so the Fed started printing into oblivion, it started printing money. And uh, the thing is that like a lot of these, uh, it wasn't printing money like in today's world, you know, it wasn't anything like what we're seeing today. But what, the, the, what was happening was that like, uh, you know, the US economy was also, you know, just doing like the rest of the world's economy. Um, but the US opened up so that the average Joe, the average shoeshine boy, the average, uh, you know, um, a farmer, the average anybody, okay, was all of a sudden a Wall Street trader. And they were able, okay, they were able to all of a sudden access the stock market and trade in the stock market. And when the stock market just kept going up and up and up and up, and it was a lot of companies like IBM, General Electric, uh, Wells Fargo, I could go on and on, that were, you know, um, blue chip stocks, blue chip companies, you know, that were have been around for a while already back then. Um, you know, they were going up along with the rest of the stock market. You know, it was a win-win situation, all right? Again, for anyone out there that follows Gregory Manorino or has been following me for a long time, you guys already know, you guys could be playing the market right now and basically, it's a win-win situation, all right? For now, for a while, it's not gonna mean, you know. Um, so, that's what was going on with the stock market, you know what I mean? And so eventually, when um, all the chickens came home to roost, the whole thing just collapsed. And when was that? Well, towards the end of the decade, all right, when the people in real power, the ones that were the whales, the ones that were really manipulating the whole system to begin with, um, because that's what they were doing, um, they cashed out, okay? <clears throat> and when they cashed out, well, they had the, all everybody else uh, got screwed. All the average common person got screwed because since a lot of these things were on margin, 
okay? Just like when I talked to you guys today about a, a little ounce of silver and how an ounce of silver you can buy for, you know, you can buy an ounce of silver for under $30, but the real price of that silver is almost $4,000. And it's because of the price suppression, the market manipulation, and a lot of the same things that are going on today that were going on back then. In fact, in, in today's world, Okay, not only have we in the last several years to months have introduced to people a lot of apps that allow people to, you know, trade from their phone, from their computer, kind of like, you know, things as, as old and as uh, that have been around like Fidelity. But yes, like I was saying, you know, like we've already had products, you know, for about a decade now, um, like Fidelity and like um, Charles Schwab and so many others, you know, where you could trade online, you could trade from your phone and all this other stuff, you know, have your brokerage account and all that. But, you know, we have now moved into today's world in which today now, you know, everyone that has a phone has a, the ability to get the Robinhood app and a, a series of other apps in which you can purchase stock on your phone as well. All right. And you can play the markets. All right. And for anyone that's been around for a while, um, even before 2017, you can play the brand new market, the more exciting market, the crypto market. OK, so if you guys remember my videos that I've been talking about crypto, talking about exactly this for the longest time already since, you know, again, 2017, I'm talking about it again right now, because guess what, guys? You know, what I mean, what's happening now is, is again, times 10 times 100 times a thousand. All right, because now not only are people, you know, playing the stock market, but the stock market is kind of like playing itself on its own. You know, the stock market is, as you guys already know, the United States government and the Federal Reserve, you know, basically the Federal Reserve is printing into oblivion. They're printing trillions and trillions of dollars a day, and they're using that money to buy the stock market. They're doing it. That's exactly what they're doing. Okay, you don't have to, don't take my word for it. Go to the Fed's website, you know, go to the government websites and you will find out for yourself. It's right in front of your face. So don't, don't be taken, don't take my word for it. All right, that's what's going on. All right, so the stock market has taken a life of its own. It's taken, you know, it's become a whole thing on its own, but people still want to play the markets. The thing is that when, you know, you're trying to buy certain um, stocks on like Robin Hood or whatever the hell, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, you are very limited in what you can buy and what you can have and all that good stuff. But when it comes to like the crypto space and the crypto world, well, guess what? That is like the 1920s. All of a sudden, you have this whole market available to you, this ginormous market with all these promising projects. Again, look, just so you can get an idea, all right, back in the 1920s, there were companies like Google, you know, like I forgot what the name of the exact name of the company was, but there was a company that was um, one of the main ones that was putting radios in everyone's home. Remember back then, you know, people were, were just getting the radio, we're just getting um, the light bulb, we're just getting the car, we're just getting a lot of these technologies. Just like today, we're getting bombarded with all this technology and we're getting bombarded with all of these um, new um, technologies and so on and so forth. It's the same thing that was going on back then. Think about it. It, okay do a little research you know um, but that, that's what was happening then and so now fast forward we're it's the same thing you know we're getting bombarded with a lot of these technologies so you know betting you know putting your money on Google wasn't necessarily a bad bet or Amazon or whatever so back then the same thing a lot of people were putting um, you know their money into you know these companies that I don't know had crazy ideas like putting radios in cars you know what I mean? And things like that. So it's just thinking about the future and thinking about where we're going and all this stuff. So again, now back to the crypto space, there's, um, again, I, you know, I only talk about like Bitcoin and like a handful of other coins, every other project, there's thousands, thousands of projects out there. You know, they are basically, again, you don't know, you know what I mean? They could be the next Wells Fargo, the next with the next Westinghouse, the next General Electric, or they could be the next pets.com. They could be the next, uh, I don't know, wood.com, I don't know, I'm just saying, you know, whatever defunct companies out there. Oh, the next Blockbuster video, the next, uh, you know, Net, Netscape, and so on and so forth, okay? I hope you guys are following me so far. So, but it's very exciting. It's very exciting to be able to, all of a sudden, like, bet, um, you know, uh, put $100 on fucking Astro Coin, and then the next day, you look at your app on your phone, and that $10 became $1,000? Or, or more, and then you sell your Astro coin 
and they give you these pieces of paper called dollars, which, you know, there's a crazy guy named Jose saying they're not worth anything, but you sure as hell think they're worth something. And so you're going out there and trading, you know, again, trading fucking, you know, crap old coin, you know, for shit coin and uh, helmet coin. And then, you know, you're getting all that and trading it for dollars. And then you're getting those dollars and buying things. Hopefully you're buying gold and silver and property and, and all these other things. But hey, whatever it is you're buying. But I'm just, I mean, that's the world that we're moving into. So there's a lot of people out there right now, right now, okay, that are starving, you know, living on the street with no opportunity, no nothing, no anything. And yet there's plenty of other people that you ask and they're saying, oh my God, the, the 2020 has been like the best year ever. Or there's plenty of people out there, you know, that are trading, have been trading for a while, you know, whether it's crypto or stocks or whatever, and they're sitting nice and pretty. In fact, there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of people out there that have been taken advantage of uh, this runaway system that we have, okay? Um, however, you know, you want to take advantage of it, you know, whether it's starting a business or businesses, you know, whether it's uh, trading the markets, the crypto markets, the real markets, you know, whether it's whatever it is, there's a lot of uh, things, okay? And now, now in today's world, you know, um, guess what? You know, now the average American, and depending on where you're from, whether it's Canada or Europe or whatever, and you know, now everybody is getting some sort of a UBI, which is universal basic income, which I never thought was gonna come. I just thought it was like one of those, uh, you know, spang great, you know, crazy ideas that never was gonna materialize or be created or anything like that, but bam, here we are, you know what I mean? You know, we're already at the very beginning stages of getting universal basic income in one form or another. And, um, you know, going back to now to like the US for a minute, you know, a lot of people in the US wanna vote for Trump because he's not bringing in communism. But the reality is, is that the United States is already more communist than China, and China is more capitalist than the US. I know a lot of you guys think I'm fucking nuts and crazy and that whole thing, but that's the real thing. If you know anything about China, what goes on over there, yeah, there's a lot of censorship. Yeah, there's a lot of government crackdown and all this other shit, but it's it's a lot more capitalism than there is here. And again, they, you, you know that because again, they can sell anything and everything without any kind of government regulation. All right, Out in China, they sell, um, they sell fucking Jordans, you know, made by a Chinese company and you know, Michael Jordan tries to sue and they, you know, China tells them to get the fuck out of the country. You know, they got McDowell's, McDonald's, McDonnie, how many versions of McDonald's over there? Um, they don't need McDonald's, they don't need Google, they don't need any of this shit, but yet all these companies are now pandering to the Chinese government because again, it's all capitalism, okay? But when it comes to the US, again, you know, a lot of people are like, oh yeah, but we're not turning into a communism. It's like, bro, everything that's happening in the US at the moment is turning it into a communism. In fact, we were already there. We've been there, okay? We, we're just now putting the last final nails on the coffin in the US, okay? Henceforth, why I only travel to the US if that, you know what I mean? And I live abroad. And, I, and I'm an American living abroad because, uh, yeah, no thanks, all right? You guys can have your martial law, you guys can have, uh, you know, your civil unrest, you guys can have, you know, all of that that's going on over there, all right? I'm, I'm good, you know what I mean? As an American citizen, you can live anywhere you want on earth, well, almost anywhere, um, and so I'm taking advantage of that right as an American to do that, and, I, and I'm always telling you guys to do the same thing, to look into that. In fact, I talk about it on this channel, and I talk about it on my other channels, and, and so on and so forth, but again, that's all part of the preparation that we have plenty of time to do according to what's happening now. To what's seen. Now, again, this all could change like that, okay? Literally. So, again, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But this is the way I see it. I don't think things are coming that quickly, that change. I mean, look, right now, as soon as the presidential elections are over, guess what? That's going to go into hyper overdrive as well. Um, you know, the whole. Um, Everybody is going to start, um, you know, uh, increasing the protesting. It's going to increase, you know, the the horribleness when it comes to that. And guess what, guys? You know what I mean? Like, uh, what do you think Trump's going to do? Well, you know what? He's going to de declare martial law. That's right. You heard me. Martial law is coming straight ahead. Now, you know, martial law is already in effect in the U.S. and it's been in effect ever since Obama. It's another story for another day. But I'm sure you guys already know, some of you guys already know. But yeah, you know what I mean? As soon as uh, Trump signed into the Defense Protection Act, I mean, that was, that's it, done. You know what I mean? Freedoms, gone. Whatever freedoms were left. Remember, he also updated and renewed the Patriot Act, among other things, all right? But hey, let's not get into all that, or shall we? 
Okay, now before we get into all that, real quick, hey, I'm sorry about any kind of uh, weird editing or what have you with the camera because I'm in a very, very echoey, hot room at the moment and I'm just trying to, um, you know, film this. Um, trying to, you know what I mean, just get back on the ball while I work on trying to finish up and fix the studio and all that. So please, you know, just thank you again for the patience and uh, let's get back to the show. So, you know, like I was saying about martial law, look guys, you know, the whole martial law, FEMA camp uh, situation, you know, all that stuff is still on the table. Who says it's not? I never, I mean, seriously, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of Americans that also think so. And they just think that Trump is not gonna bring that on. And he might not be bringing it on. It might be the next president, but what he is doing is that he is, again, continuing to lay the strong foundation so that eventually, when the time is right, it will happen, okay? Again, you know, you gotta look at, you know, he is a funny guy, he's hilarious, he's a great president to have, you know, for, you know, craps and giggles for a million things. I would much rather have him than Hillary or Biden, you know, whatever, or even Obama, you know what I mean? Again, I would rather have someone like him than someone like Obama, someone that's like a statesman, but he's raping you without any Vaseline. You know, at least I prefer him, you know, um, where he is raping you without Vaseline. It's just some people are choosing not to look at it. He is telling you what he's doing, though. I mean, again, it's, it's in your face. but. Many people are just, again, um, whether it's Stockholm Syndrome or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Um, they don't want to be wrong. Again, whatever the reason is, the reality is, is that, you know, there's a reason why everybody is behind this guy, you know, in the sense of what's happening now with the presidential election. Again, you already know my stance on the guy. I don't like him. I mean, I voted for him. Um, even though I voted for Obama twice, I voted for Clinton, I voted uh, for for Clinton back in the day, I voted for Gore and all that shit, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, you know I mean, I had already given up on the system a long time ago, but when this guy came around, they're like, oh, let's, let's uh, put this guy in there and see what he does. And so what I think that's happening right now is that a lot of people are doing the same thing that we did in 2016. A lot of Democrats, a lot of people that voted for Obama, a lot of people that just uh, know their history, love their country, and all these other things, you know, they said, hey, we gotta put this guy in here because even though he is all over the place, he is the only one that has the in, our best interests at heart, the US's best interests at heart. And you know, fast forward to where we are now, again, you know what I mean? I disagree with a million things that he's done, but I also am happy and I agree with a lot of other things that he's done. You know, mainly, you know, the whole political correctness thing, you know, he's pushed back on that, you know, um, and there's been other, you know, um, you know, things that he's done. I don't have them in my notes or anything like that. But there are, you know, going after, you know, the people that like playing with little kids and so on and so forth, which again brings me back to where we are now, you know. A lot of people are seeing that they have only one choice. They're going to have to choose between Trump or they're going to be choosing against, you know, this guy that, you know, Biden or whatever, you know, which the only interest that that guy has is the fact that he's from the Democratic Party. But everything he's done is literally, you know, to hurt the poor, to hurt the black person, to hurt the, the immigrant, to hurt all of these individuals out there. But no one is choosing to look at that. You know, people are looking to choose to look at what they want to look at. Again, you know, they just want to look at... Look, let's go back to football, okay? Like if you... Um, let's say like someone like Ray Lewis, okay? Or you know what, maybe not Ray Lewis. Let's pick on somebody else, okay? I like Ray Lewis. <laughs> See? You're biased. Confirmed. No, but the point I'm making is that how many players in the NFL right now or not right now, at some point in the NFL or any league or any whatever have committed crimes like, I don't know, murder, rape, and so on and so forth, they have been acquitted and yet they are allowed back on the team and playing. And so for example, every team in the, in the league and every fan in the league might, ha might hate XYZ player, but the people um, whose team that player is on, they love him. They don't care that he committed murder. He's like, yeah, he's gonna murder your team, motherfucker. You know what I mean? They don't care that he raped. He's like, I'm gonna rape you, motherfucker. You know, that whole thing. You know, they don't care about his his past, you know, his criminal past, the fact that he's a danger to society. No, they care that he can create a fumble, that he can get an interception, that he can throw the, the pass, can catch the pass, whatever. You know what I mean? That's all that matters. So it's kind of like the same thing. You know what I mean? The very same thing with what's going on now. You know what I mean? Now, that's why I compare, you know, politics more to like theater to the WWF, WWE, whatever, um, you know, football, and so on and so forth. You know, all these other, you know, uh, 
theatrical um, things out there because, you know, don't be getting it twisted. Everything is like the WWE, all right? It is, all right? Everything has been planned way ahead of time and they are just, um, you know, we're just the, the audience that's watching the game. And uh, if we get too invested in it, see, you can watch wrestling from far away and be like, oh, cool, this is awesome, this is whatever. But, you know, if you're like 45 years old and you're really still invested into wrestling so much that you believe it and you get mad at somebody for telling you, hey, I think that's fake, bro, you know, that's, that's where a lot of people are politically right now. Okay, so I mean, and again, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I wasn't part of it. You know, I, I, I broke free from my spell. And uh, come, come 2016, you know, I got, again, I got put under that spell again. Only, only to get broken away from that spell for good about a year into his presidency. A year into Trump's presidency, I'm like, God damn it, you know, this motherfucker's just like everybody else. And so, I mean, again, you know what I mean? You can see it all happening. Look, at, look, he allowed the Fed to take over the Treasury, okay? He signed, okay, officially, you know, again, he signed the Defense Protection Act. Um, he is giving everybody universal basic income, or at least, you know, he's well on his way there, but he has been giving everybody universal basic income. Um, he's bailed out the banks, bailed out the, the corporations, bailed out the Dow. Before he got elected, he was saying about how much he hates the stock market and how much it's fake, phony, and false. As soon as he gets elected, oh, this is the best stock market ever. So again, I could go on and on, okay? And this is kind of like what I'm, I'm trying to bring up in a lot of the things that I'm talking about today. I'm just trying to bring up all of these things that I see. I'm trying to show you guys this chessboard, what I see on the chessboard, and also, you know, what I, you know, how I see it all being played out, okay? So back in the 1920s, we had Republicans as the president for 12 years, okay? I think it was Coolidge for two terms, and then we had Herbert Hoover, okay, towards the end. All right, and um, the main things that um, that we remember about these presidents is the fact that they did absolutely nothing during that time, and that's one thing that you can say about Trump. He's done a bunch of things, but if you really look at it, he hasn't done anything. In fact, he has only deflected or done nothing. All right, but basically deflected a lot of the things that the other party or other individuals out there are trying to do or nothing at all, okay? Whether it's, or, or, or reverse things. Again, you know, take away regulation. Remember, that's what we talked about that happened in the 20s. Um, you know, deflect a lot of the things. Okay, but like, for example, he complains about fake news and he complains about, you know, them censoring him. Again, the absurdity of that, the fact that they censor the president. I mean, anyways, but, but you know, all that going on, and yet he's just playing the game. You know, we all know that he could very easily you know, change that shit around, all right? And make sure that everybody's listening to him and, and all these other things. But again, they choose not to do that. It's all a game. It's all, you know what I mean? Like pick a side. Even when you're on a side, they still are trying to divide you within that group and keep dividing you and keep dividing you and keep dividing you. When you're in whatever group you're in, you can never be, and again, mostly on the left, but this goes for the right as well. You can never be woke enough. You can never be you know, enough, you know what I mean? This is just like a religion, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you, no matter how religious you are, you know, the hardcore religious people, you can never be religious enough. There's always more that you can do. There's always some sin that you're, you know, um, you know, uh, embarking on and so on and so forth, okay? So, you know, what's going on now is that, you know, people are just cementing themselves even deeper into our, their ideologies. You know, someone like Trump is out there saying, no more, Communism of any kind. We're not gonna have communism. If you were like me, there's no communism, but yet everything he's doing is communist, all right? He is buying up, again, you know, he, the government is printing money out of thin air and buying up all of these corporations, buying up all these companies, buying everything up. Remember, that's what communism does. They own everything, okay? And then they divide it, okay? They give you your fair share. All right, and that's that's happening right now. That's that's right now. That is the reality. That is the truth that we're living in, and a lot of people are choosing not to look at that. All right, not to see that. All right, and uh, you know, as we go forward throughout all of these major changes that are going to be happening in the roaring 2020s, we all need to be well aware that if they say this is purple, it's probably green.
okay? And, and then many, many things like that where nothing is what it seems. You know, um, we're all discovering that now. A lot of people that have been talking about exactly what I'm talking about today and, and other things like this were crazy, you know, tinfoil hat wearing individuals. But nowadays, again, I have to continue making these videos because there is a new group of people that are realizing what's going on and they need to learn what's going on and they just keep, you know, multiplying more and more each day. You know, that's why I'm here, you know, making all the, you know, the full effort to create this video and get back on the wagon and get back on the wheel and start creating as many of these as I can until they say no more. Because again, I have already been censored so many times on my channel that again, I myself have kind of like, you know, given up on all that because I want to, you know, um, you know, do what I want to do. All right. And um, it's, it's, it's a little difficult, you know what I mean? To do that when, you know, you have everything against you. So that's why you see me doing a live cooking channel. That's why you see me, you know, um, telling you guys, you know, uh, talking about travel and, and doing travel videos on my other channel. That's why you see me having a podcast on a, on a third channel, all right? And now, you know, unfortunately, even though this is the channel that started it all, this is the channel that now has to be on the back, back, back burner because unfortunately, it keeps getting attacked. I look at my numbers on my YouTube channel and I see the views to my videos are less and less and less. In fact, I have, Again, you know, uh, channels that have less than a thousand subscribers. In fact, some that, you know, the, the cooking channel and that has like about a hundred subscribers and yet the numbers are pretty close already, you know? And it's funny, yet when I look at the, you know, when I look at other stats on my, on this channel, like uh, let's say subscribers, I see that every single day I keep getting more and more and more subscribers. By the way, Check to see if you have been unsubscribed. You might be unsubscribed as others are subscribing because I keep seeing new faces every day, tons of new faces. So back when I was, you know, um, back when I was doing videos on a regular basis and I was getting like over 1,500 views, no, sorry, about, a, a, about around 800 views a day, all right, when I was getting like around, 100, uh, around 800 views a day, I was getting only a minimal amount of subscribers. Now, I'm getting like, I don't know, 300 views a day, give or take, nothing in comparison, and yet I get so many subscribers. My channel keeps blowing up and blowing up. And so I'm just gonna keep making content until whatever. Again, if you wanna see, if you wanna make sure that you never lose you know, anything about you know, what I have to say or anything like that, please check me out on Library. Check me out on BitChute. Check me out all the links are down below where you can find me and will forever find me. Because again, even if they take me and scrub me off of YouTube, I still got other channels. <clears throat> and all the videos that, you know, are scrubbed are not scrubbed because they exist at the very least on my hard drive, okay? So they will be, you know, put back on top because a lot of the views that I'm getting today, remember, I don't publish like I used to. I'm gonna get to publishing on a more regular basis to this channel like I used to, but if you really look at my channel right now, I don't publish that much anymore. Um, and yet, you know, I just keep getting views and views and views on a lot of the older videos that talk about well, a lot of the same things I'm talking about right now. The Roaring 2020s was a subject that I started talking about three years ago, okay? All right, and here we are, all right? We're at the beginning of 2020 and uh, a lot of the things, a lot of very similar things, you know, that, uh, that uh, I was saying were gonna be happening um, are happening right now. You know, they're happening or they're on the verge of happening <clears throat> and we are moving closer and closer to that. So another one of the things that I was uh, saying that we were gonna go through was some sort of civil unrest. Well, bam, here we are. We've been in civil unrest for months now, right? Ray, really crazy civil unrest. Civil unrest that doesn't even make any sense, right? In the US alone. I'm not even talking about the civil unrest that's happening all over the world. We still got the Yellow Vest movement going strong in France. That's right, the Yellow Vest are still there. But yet, they're scrubbed off the internet, all right? Um, you know, all the mass protests happening in Germany, all the mass protests happening all over the world, whether, you know, the, the, they're taking, you know, China's taking over Hong Kong, you know, what's happening in, in Australia right now, which is becoming worse than Cuba. Um, because again, I follow people in Cuba and I'm like, wow, this Australia is doing worse than Cuba. How's that even possible? You know, what's going on in Canada, what's going on in some Latin American countries, what's going on all around the world. You know, a lot of these things that, you know, I saw coming and some I didn't see coming. But at the end of the day, um, the underlying uh, subject of 
you know, the fact that, you know, we were moving into the roaring 2020s and we were moving into a brand new era, a brand new time, a brand new everything um, in which, uh, you know, we were going to be printing money into oblivion. We were going to go into hyperinflation and so on and so forth is, is finally here. And we're only at the very, very beginnings of it. Again, remember what I said earlier, we got to go into negative interest rates. The crypto market has to fucking increase by like a lot more. The stock market has to keep going and going, you know, increasing in size. Um, you know, so many things, the, the civil unrest, you know, whether it's what's happening in the US right now or not, um, you know, all that has to be quelled or it's gonna continue getting worse. You know, how will it get quelled? You know what I mean? How will all that stop? Well, there's a lot of ways, you know what I mean? The US, you know, basically, you know, President, President Trump can literally, basically, all he has to do is, uh, as soon as he gets reelected, is uh, send in the troops to all of these cities, you know, like uh, Portland, uh, Seattle, I don't know if anything's still going up on there, uh, whatever, you know, uh, Chicago, LA, and so on and so forth, and literally send in the troops and stop it. Done. The end, all right? Literally just stomp them, stomp them. That's, that's what he would be doing, all right? And then declare martial law. All right, well, actually, hold on, hold on. Declare martial law and then do all that, okay? Because again, you remember at the very, very beginning of the lockdowns and all that stuff, how they were having the army, okay, marching down residential areas and shooting at people that were just outside their door, regular citizens, all right? We already had a little bit of a taste of martial law. We already had a taste of all that, all right? The re-education camps, you know, the FEMA camps, in which, you know, again, if you are not, you know, believing in the whole COVID thing, we're taking you away to a camp, you're taking you away to that. And again, a lot of this stuff is coming from the left, but a lot of it is coming from the right. But it's all together in one. All this civil unrest isn't going anywhere unless they bring it to a complete dead stop. So there's a, a couple ways, you know, again, in, instilling martial law, putting the army on the streets and making sure that everybody complies or else, or we just go to war with China. And I think, honestly, again, you know, a lot of people are like civil war, civil war, civil war, but I really do think that what's really gonna happen, what's really, really, really gonna happen is something that they've been talking about for a very long time, very long time, the people in power, the people that are really doing, you know, um, They've been setting us up for this moment, okay, for a while, and it's gonna be World War III, okay? And, it's gonna, and I don't know how that's gonna take place, I don't know how that's gonna materialize, I don't know if it's gonna be, you know, a, 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 it's, if it's gonna be a cold war, or an actual hot war, or a combination of both. Um, we already know we're in a trade war, we're in a communications war, you know, we're in a, in a wordy at war with China, whether you want to admit that or not, whether you wanna believe it or not, that's the truth. Okay, and each day, you know, the countries, you know, around the world are picking their sides. Okay, all these countries that have to choose between the US and China are picking their sides. India is on the US side, Russia is on the US side. Yeah, that's right. You thought Russia was on China's side, they're not. Australia is not on China's side, even though you might think that they are and they're leaning that way, but they're not. They're actually breaking from China. So, Australia is breaking from China, India, Philippines. Russia, many countries in Europe, many countries in Latin America, like again, you know, Mexico, where I'm at right now, is definitely not gonna lean with China. They're leaning next to US. No matter what you fucking think about the immigration, the racism, the wall, the whatever, if Mexico has to choose, they're choosing the US. Okay? At least now. At least in this point in, in history, okay? And that's what's, what's, that's what's happening. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot of, uh, you know, you know, uh, People drawing lines in the sand, countries drawing lines in the sand. You know, this whole virus situation, okay? We've already, you know, got to the point where it's like, I, if you're still believing in this whole virus thing, how indoctrinated are you? You know what I mean? You have to be at a, a, another level of indoctrination if you're still believing in, in, this, in this virus thing like it's a real thing. You know, we're already at a point that no matter whether you're wearing the mask or not, you know exactly why you're wearing that mask or not. And it's all politics, okay? That's where we are, whether it's here in this fucking little rural area of Mexico or whether it's in, you know, your backyard or wherever it is. You know, that's what's happening right now, you know, where, you know, that whole, the disease, the mask, the whatever is turning into, poli pol you know, political, just like everything else, okay? It's like, it's, it's choose my team or else, all right? If you're on that team, you're the enemy. If you're on this team, then 
again, you're still the enemy unless you comply 1000% with what we're telling you. All right? And so, you know, we're moving into all that. And so, if we're trying to really unite the nation, I mean, we, we only got to go back to, you know, um, what happened during 9-11, uh, all right? And we saw that as soon as that happened, the whole, the whole country just together, boom. You know, they just got together. Remember, remember what was happening back before 9-11, okay? It was after the Bush-Gore election. You know, I was one of the Goreites, okay? Just like someone, you know, it would be Antifa today. They were like, oh no, we gotta get Gore in there. They stole the election from Gore. Gore, it should have been Gore. And then uh, guess what? As soon as fucking 9-11 happened, boom. I wasn't, I wasn't pro-Bush, but I was definitely pro-kicking some terrorist ass. So again, you know, right now, everybody is looking to blame somebody for this whole virus thing. China seems to be a very, very easy thing to blame. The only ones that are saying don't blame them are the people on the left, you know, because of the whole cultural this, cultural that. But you know, humans are humans. And right now, when it comes down to it, you know, what are we gonna do? We're gonna blame ourselves for the mess that we're in, or are we gonna blame somebody else? You already know what we're doing. You know, the US and the rest of the world is gonna wanna blame somebody else. And we already have a culprit, because it's the Wuhan China virus, all right? So that's what everyone's gonna start blaming. They're gonna start blaming that. They've already started doing that. Notice that whenever you hear Trump or any leader that is pushing against China, that they're like, oh yeah, the China virus or the whatever. And you know what I mean? And they're pushing very negatively towards that, all right? Again, don't, don't be getting it twisted. Nobody, nobody also, people don't know what's going on in China, but people in China are now starving. They are under, they're, they're starving because of a lot of weather related issues. Um, they've had, you know, floods. They've had, uh, remember last year, they were recovering from that pig virus, or right, where a lot of their pigs got killed off and so people are starving there. Um, like, I, I don't know how, what the percentage is, but I know it's a very high percentage. Um, but um, there's, it's like 40, 50%, but it's a high percentage of, uh, food that is imported into China. You would think that China would be very self-sustainable and be able to feed its own people, but they can't. And so a good majority of the food that comes into China comes from abroad. And if everything is frozen and half the world hates them, well, and guess what? They're not getting food. So they don't have food. They don't got water. They don't got a lot of fucking things. Okay. Well, now that they know the whole money thing isn't fucking working out for them too well. And there's a lot of fucking, you know, now, you know, people are starting to turn against them because of the virus. So in my, in, 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 you know, in my estimation, you know, and again, you're hearing that China keeps attacking India and attacking India. They could be attacking India, or those might be false flags, but regardless, that's materializing. And if, if I was on China's side, if I was China's boots, you know, if I was China, um, yeah, I would probably be, probably be trying to start some sort of world war. All right. Why? Because as you already know, when, when we went through World War One and World War Two, that be, that created the superpower that is the USA. So China, and again, this ain't nothing new. It's the same old playbook. All right. China's looking at that the same way. You know what I mean? Or the people that are in control of China. This is not the president either. It's not a fucking panda bear boo. You know. So you know, with with, with with all that being said, you know, they're looking at that too. You know, they know that they're, you know what I mean? That they are next in line, whether they like it or not. And guess what? They're gonna have to deal with um, what's, com what's coming up next, which is now they gotta, you know, make the, the move to be the superpower, okay? Again, whether they like it or not. And so what is that move? Well, they gotta go up against the, the, the only superpower. So that's the US, so now China has to fight the US. So the US is, I mean, the US is gonna remain in power no matter what, and if, there's a, if it comes down to it, I really do think that you know um, this would help reestablish a new dollar, would reestablish a lot of new things, um, a lot of old new things, but it's gonna keep the US in power for a while. Again, if the US and China go to war, I don't see China winning, even though they have so many, many more people. <sighs> you know, come on. You know, old Jimbo in his backyard is probably more trained and well and, and better trained and more suited. Even a fucking shit shithead cop from you know whatever shithead community that is out there, you know, blindly killing people because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Again, that guy is even more prepared than your typical Chinese soldier. All right, and as remember, we got fucking Grandma Betty with her shotgun. You know, we got you know we got fucking you know all kinds of people that are on the ultra left that have been very recently you know buying a lot of guns, bullets, ammo. So everybody in the U.S. knows how to fight one way or the other. We're not going to get invaded. That's definitely not going to happen. And we have the side. We have literally you know many many countries on our side in, in this scenario of us going to war with China.
okay? And China right now is looking like public enemy number one. You know, um, not us. All of a sudden, USA was public enemy number one, and as each day moves forward, you know, all of a sudden, everybody wants to be our friend again. Hmm. And so going back to like the whole talking about the war thing, I mean, if you go back to history and know about the banking cartel and know about all of these things, you already know that the banking cartel, the people that are in charge, whether it's the Federal Reserve or the Rothschilds or the whatever, you know, whoever's in there, JP Morgan's, whoever, whoever, whatever, it don't matter. I'm not going to sit here and speculate and talk about, you know, the lizard peoples and this and all that shit. You know, the point is, is that they have been saying this to you for centuries upon centuries upon centuries. They do not care who runs the world. As long as they print the money, that is all that matters. Okay? So with that being said, are there Rothschild banks in, in China? You better believe there are. You get what I'm saying? Um, how long have they been there? I don't know. Um, ever since Nixon, okay, um, you know, let go of the gold standard to the dollar, um, and we were already, you know what I mean, in the decline, you know, we're in the last stage of the dollar because now, ever since then, that's when the dollar straight up became fiat paper currency and not backed by anything. From that moment on, the Roch, you know, if you know some history, that's around the same time that we were opening up to China. You know, we were going out there and playing ping pong and doing all kinds of stupid shit. So guess what, you know what I mean? From that moment on, the Rothschilds were already going in there and starting their banks and, you know, re and, and establishing themselves so that when this moment in time came, well, they're established over there. All right, and they're on, uh, you know what I mean? They're on both sides, okay, of the war. And again, they don't care who wins as long as they keep printing the money, all right? And so again, you already know, you now you might know a little bit more about who might be in charge of China. It's the banks, little hint, hint. It's not the president. Same thing as in the US, it's not the president or Congress or anything like that, it is the banks, okay? The banks are the ones that are in charge of everything, whether it's this country, your country, whatever country you pick a country all right they're basically in charge and in fact where there is no Rothschild run central bank you know those are the ones that are like the highly volatile super duper secret terrorist organization countries you know like Iran and Cuba and Venezuela which by the way they also do have Rothschild banks sorry to break it to you all right guys so let's do a little bit of a recap for today's episode um, I think I've recorded enough I gotta edit all this um, again, you know, something is kind of weird happening with the cameras because I'm using this camera also for live streaming on the cooking channel and I've been, you know, just, you know, I got like, I had certain things that I had set on the cameras and my equipment and I got to move it around and uh, boring technical stuff that you guys don't care about. But let's just get right really into it because, uh, again, just want to give you a quick brief rundown on the things that we talked about today. So again, you know, the whole, um, stock market. You know, the whole hyperinflation, that whole thing, you know what I mean? Uh, the, the crypto markets that are now a brand new thing into all this, a brand new, you know, part of the equation. It hasn't even gotten started yet. Again, you know, um, back in 2017, we had these thing, we had this thing called BitConnect um, that was a total pyramid scheme scam. It worked for a while, you know what I mean? Up until it did it. And so now we're dealing today with this thing called DeFi, which is a very similar thing, right? That's uh, uh, again, BitConnect 2.0. I have been burned at the stake, you know, in the crypto world for saying these things. But hey, I have been burned at the stake many times in the crypto world for saying a lot of things like that. And I don't give up because guess what? You know, a lot of the things that I have been saying, well, they're coming true and they're true and they're doing their thing. So the same thing, you know what I mean? Like again, I, I, I called the collapse. I called the fact that, you know what I mean? That th this whole crypto space would become, you know, Wolf of Wall Street style, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, same thing as uh, the, you know, during the stock market back in the 1920s and all that and so on and so forth. So, you know, I, again, you know, here we are, you know, um, exactly where I said we were gonna be and we are now at the very beginnings of a brand new crypto bull run, all right? And uh, you know, we might get to, uh, Bitcoin right now is like around 10,000, 11,000 uh, uh, in price per Bitcoin. Um, the high before we crashed down back in 2017 was 20,000 and what speculators and what people that trade and do all this stuff, me included, I don't trade, but I mean, I'm into this stuff, you know, we're gonna be reaching 100K or 120K before we come crashing down again. 
okay? And it's just rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. If you already know that the roaring 20s are gonna be here for a while, well, when Bitcoin gets to 100K, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna hold it again or are you gonna sell it, okay? And trade it for some valuable asset and wait for Bitcoin to drop down to like 20, 30, again in the next years and then buy again and rinse and repeat okay same thing you know like what remember buy low sell high i know most people out there buy high sell low okay so you already know what to do you got to buy low sell high but how will you how do you really know how to do all that again you learn through experience so you know we're gonna go through all that again you know the whole DeFi thing I'm not gonna get into that I'll make a video just on that and I'll talk about just that in a minute hold on I think it's raining I gotta get my laundry from the backyard all right I got the laundry out just in time crisis averted Christian was already out there picking on the laundry so perfect and again perfect segue to what I'm saying now we're, we're in the middle of a crisis. We're in the middle of creating of a crisis. We're in the middle of multiple crises. There's gonna be more coming in the future, but if you know what you're doing and you, again, you see the rain and you're able to get out there in time, then you're gonna be fine because once we get to Bitcoin on, for example, at 100K, what are you gonna do? You feel me? It's like seeing the rain. You already know it's about to start raining. Are you gonna get your clothes out and make sure that they stay dry? And you're gonna be stay, you know, you're gonna stay dry to live another day, or are you gonna sit there and, and just hope that it doesn't rain, knowing that it's gonna rain? It starts pouring, and all your clothes is wet again. All right, so it's the same thing, okay? And I'm just talking about the crypto space because I know there's a lot of crypto-related people out there watching and listening, and they love uh, all my crypto chat. But you know, the crypto markets now is just like the stock market. You know, it's great to play, it's great to gamble, it's great to do all that, but that's all you're gonna be doing. But you know, we haven't seen anything yet, okay? Again, we're seeing people like uh, the Dave Portnoy guy, you know, some guy that is, has created a brand new version of, uh, um, of ESPN. You know, he calls it Barstool Sports. I watch it now a little bit more frequently. In fact, I don't watch ESPN or anything like that because ESPN and all that shit has become too, you know, disney mified you know, too corporatized, you know, too, um, again, woke. And so all of a sudden I watched this guy and others out there, you know, that do things like bar to, barstool sports and they're just saying, ah, fuck this guy. Hey, you know, we're going to bet on this and we're going to do that. And, you know, the Dolphins are going to win, but only because I get screwed. But, and it's just, you, you see that and you're like, oh, wow, it's guys talking stupid shit about stupid shit. I can hang out with this. I can watch this. I can drink my beer with this and not have, and so again, back to capitalism, you know what I mean? Again, you know, all these things are cycles, you know, everyone's like, oh my God, the end of the world, woe is me, yada, yada, yada. But we couldn't be any further from the truth, okay? Just as, you know, um, MySpace had its day and then it got replaced by Facebook. Well, guess what? Facebook is having its day and it's gonna get replaced by something else. Just like ESPN had its day and people are like, oh my God, who or, who or what could ever replace ESPN? Some fucking dude with a fucking YouTube channel and talking like this about not giving a fuck, you know what I mean? And fuck this and fuck that and patriots and the, and all of a sudden, you know, that guy, you know, is ringing the bell in, uh, on the stock market exchange, okay? And that guy is the next replacement for ESPN and so on. And so for eventually he'll get sold out, he'll sell out, okay? Just like a lot of people are and th things do. Not, all, not everything, but... That could be the case with him, and then there'll be another replacement, and, and another, and another. It's always like that. We gotta keep, okay? Nothing's around forever, and the only things that are around forever are things that keep reinventing themselves, like IBM and other companies, but that's another story. So, you know, with that being said, again, you know, we're living in a moment in time right now in which, you know, we can all be fully taken advantage of this. Um, back during the March panic of this year, sure, I went out and I bought more gold, more silver, more Bitcoin, all right? And you know, after like uh, we started recovering, I was like, ah oh, man, actually I bought that a little too early, but again, sitting here six months later, I'm like, God damn, good thing I bought that shit. I'm sitting here pretty, you know, doing my little, hold on, hold on. You know, doing my little dance. You know, I'm glad I fucking bought that shit. So it's the same thing. Again, wash, rinse, repeat, okay? And that's all I keep telling you guys and that's all I keep re re trying to reinforce you guys and I think I'm gonna have to continue doing this. You know, today I woke up Monday morning and I was like, man, I, I wanna do a Monday motivation. 
I kind of can't because it's Monday and you know, you would have had to have woken up with that. I would have had to do that, do that before, but it's making me, you know, rethink a lot of the things that I'm doing. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe I gotta start getting back on the ball and start giving you guys, you know, the content that you guys want, not just what I want, but you know what I mean? Again, obviously doing what I want so that I can enjoy what I do, but also giving you guys what you want and what you need, okay? And uh, and I gotta figure it out, you know what I mean? I just gotta do it, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's a lot of people are depending on me, my information, a lot of these things that I do, so I gotta continue. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta barrel through this, all right? No matter what, and so do you, and so do all of us. But hey, if you know what you're doing, and you're educated, and you, um, and you are literally seeing you're reaping the reward you know you're literally picking the fruits of your labor from the tree then guess what you know what i mean this makes it a lot more fun a lot more fun and so for me yeah you know what i mean like i kind of stopped for a little bit you know doing videos i was only doing the live streams and things like that because i to me was like well fuck look at this huge tree that i just fucking planted these fruits are amazing everything's great people still don't want to eat my fruit ah fuck it i'm just gonna keep doing what i want to do and like I don't, I don't need to keep making these videos but the reality is that again the algorithm uh, what is it like uh, not the algorithm um, but the stats on my channel don't lie you know you guys are out there watching old videos of mine Tons of people are watching older videos of mine and I'm sure that they have no new videos to look forward to. And uh, that's where it begins and it ends. So that's why I need to start creating brand new videos talking about a lot of the same things that I talked about. I might have to go back into my Li you know, like uh, my archives and start picking up some of those topics and just redoing them again. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, you know, like again, I used to talk about how shitty Ethereum is three years ago. Guess what? Three years later, I was right. Okay? Again, you know, I can hear all the boos already and shit like that, but I can go on and on. So it's, 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 and, and again, a lot of the comments that I get on my videos are like, hey, can you do an update on this video? So I need to do an update. Again, just talking crypto, but I gotta do an update on BAT, on the BAT uh, token in the Brave browser. I gotta do updates like today. I did it on the Roaring 2020s, and we're gonna be talking more and more about that. We're gonna bring back the whole Wolf of Wall Street thing, you know, as, uh, copyright permits um you know again you know we're on the we're on the cusp of, of, of either civil war or world war i think it's going to be world war and that's the way we're really looking at it that's really the way things are going remember we're in a global world we're on the worldwide thing now this is nothing new this was happening back then a long time ago ever since we've been able to fucking you know communicate with another country so a long time Mucho time, okay? So again, a lot of these things, nothing nothing new here. But I think we did, I think we've been able to cover it all today. I mean, I think I, we've got a pretty long episode, uh, pretty long podcast, and putting this up on the podcast for easy listening purposes and all that good stuff. And uh, this is only gonna be the first one of many, many more. Um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, kind of juggling whether to bring back Monday Motivation or not. You know what, I'll let you guys decide down there if you guys want me to bring that back or not um and so on and so forth okay i'm going to be doing obviously i'm not going to doing any be doing any live streams on this channel but i am going to be doing more uploads like this probably shorter maybe longer we're working on that we're going to figure that out um and, and now let's get to the plug time all right let's get to a plug time so for easy reference please just go to my channel joseatiaga.com link is at the bottom description i'm showing you some of the channel website here okay some of the website here and as you can see from the website you know i got literally i got the podcast there i got the travel channel i got this channel and i got the brand new cooking live channel all right in which i'm still live streaming okay i'm live streaming for again anywhere from two to three to four hours straight cooking a whole meal from start to finish all right um and we do all kinds of things so just check out that channel um it's brand new i've only have you know been with it for less than a month um i got the travel channel that's uh, been almost a year now well, anyways, but this is just like a little store it's called waldo's waldo's okay yeah so this is like a little store like a little you know grocery store what have you all that good stuff <laughs> hola We got another store here I'm not quite sure where Christian's at we're just waiting for her but anyways but yeah so like if I don't have my thing on you know what I mean and all of a sudden people if they get captured on camera they don't feel so bad they don't feel so so anything like that because um, you know I'm not wearing it so I'm not here to tattletale oh there she is so 
I'm waiting for her to do some shopping. They got all kinds of goodies and stuff in here. This, uh, I guess like a Claire's or something where they just sell all kinds of things. But yeah, I'm not going in there because I really don't want to wear my, my face mask. So I'm just going to hang out here. She's paying anyway, and that's it. But I'm just going to, you know, just uh, show you. All right, what's up? But I got a lot of content coming up because guess what? Things are starting to open up. I can show you more and more of uh, what's around me and all that good stuff. So I'm going to be putting more content on that. The podcast every single Tuesday and Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, I go live with the Zoomer. We call it the Boomer and the Zoomer. I'm supposed to be the Boomer. Yeah, anyways. So we do the Boomer and the Zoomer and we're just talking shit for two hours and we talk about pretty much everything that I just talked about now or we're talking about sports or we're talking about ice cream or we're talking about his day at work or my day or whatever. Anything and anything and everything. And a lot of you guys are enjoying it. That's growing a lot. So for now, we're all doing webcam stuff. So I might webcam into a deposition, but eventually i hope we return back to flying because that's the only cool part of it yeah for sure bro i mean the deposition's all right but i'd rather be flying You're flying you want to get the, the, the i want to get the full experience you know. i want to say hello to the flight attendants <laughs> Uh, the pumpkin eating that's a pumpkin eating american dream bro yeah, to be a, the, uh, a businessman you yeah. know like a moderate, moderate businessman that flies uh coach and fucking uh stays in fucking motel six and i'll order take in food just one piece of pumpkin pie as usual please yes. <laughs> um, oh you're here again mr hansen that's right that's right just one piece of pumpkin pie bitch <laughs> Would you like your usual room? <laughs> when I ever, when have I ever said no, Tracy? <laughs> I'm gonna have a pumpkin pie waiting for me in the room. God, I'm, a, I'm gonna be an asshole. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna, be? I'm, look, I'm flying into Detroit. <laughs> I had a layover in Detroit. I don't want to wait <laughs> for that pumpkin pie. <laughs> Yo, where the fuck are we supposed to get a pumpkin pie in the middle of July? <laughs> I don't give a shit, Tracy. <laughs> it should better be in the room. <laughs> and I'm going up there at six. Dude, like they got pumpkin pie waiting for me in Aurora, right? Yeah. You, should, you better have it for me in fucking whatever the fuck. Yeah. In Toledo, Kansas. <laughs> Aurora would never do me like this. <laughs> I go back into the office and I'm like, I'm not handling, I'm not handling any more Toledo cases. It's just not going to happen for me. Someone else could deal with those people. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what I got going on at work. I'm that's giving us a lot of positive feedback. We're enjoying that. So um, we, we do the live podcast on YouTube so that you guys can interact with us live because you guys love hanging out with us live and you know it's just like a live radio show you get to we have a call-in thing where you guys can call in we have uh, the chat going so you guys can chat you guys can interact with us throughout the show but if you have no time to listen to us at night um, then you can easily just go to my podcast you know you just just type in Jose Atiaga on your favorite podcasting app, okay? Whether it's uh, iTunes, Spotify, CastBox, you know, whatever other, you know, podcasting thing is out there, just type in The Boomer and the Zoomer or type in Jose Atiaga and bam, you're gonna find uh, everything. You know, you, this thing that I'm recording right now um, through video, I'm also making into audio, all right? Alongside the podcast, alongside everything else, okay? so. I'm all over the internet. I'm not going away anytime soon. I'm updating the website constantly. I'm adding more content. I'm now going to be uploading tons of videos. You already know that, you know, no matter what happens, I'm going to be on BitChute. I'm going to be on Library. I'm going to be on so many other platforms. I'm going to be adding more platforms. I'm going to be adding more links. I'm going to be spreading myself, you know, even, you know, wider. All right. And all that good stuff. So please stay tuned for all that good stuff. All right. You already know what to do. Um, so, also, if you enjoy this content, leave me a like, leave me a subscribe, share, 
more importantly than anything, more importantly than anything else, please share. Share this video, share this knowledge, and share, share, share. If you watch other videos and you enjoy them, share them because outside of the cooking channel or if something like that, they're or, or you know talking about some sort of uh, you know travel channel stuff. You know they're not really going to share the video because the algorithm doesn't want this information out there. Okay, we're not going to get into that, but you already know it's all part of the whole censorship. So how can we combat this together? Very easily, share it. Share the video, share the knowledge, just share it. Go, go ahead and knock yourself out. Do whatever you gotta do with it, all right? It's not gonna bother me at all. I want this to be shown. I want this to be heard, okay? And uh, that's it, guys. You know, I really appreciate your time today. I really appreciate you hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you, period, all, end of story, all right? Thank you so much. Uh, it's really hot, really humid out there. I was thinking about going out there and doing a walking and talking after I was done with this. I gotta do some groceries, I gotta do some stuff, so I'm gonna see what, uh, what's going on here and maybe I'll film another episode, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do groceries, maybe I'll edit this, I don't know, whatever. I'm gonna let you guys go because that's the end of this episode. Guys, you already know what to do. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, 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 all right? Um, Please like, please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon, all right? Don't forget to hit the bell icon on all the channels because that way you are alerted immediately when I, uh, down, when I upload a video, no matter what channel it's on. So always hit that bell icon. That's how you really know, okay, um, when I'm putting out a video because, again, that's basically the only way that YouTube is, uh, you know, helping me help you tell you about the videos, all right? And that's it. And the last thing I'm going to say is don't forget to stay awesome, all right? And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm coming, I'm coming. Bye.